Today's video is called A Sky Full of Dreams. We're going to be looking at an artist that I really like called Joseph Cornell and we're going to be making our own beautiful sky um, full of dream images and I'm going to show you how to do it in a minute. But first we're going to have a look at some of the inspiration from him. So Joseph Cornell was a wonderful artist who made beautiful things with lots of different source material that he found in different places. So he would go to the library or to second-hand bookshops and he would cut them up or photocopy them and make them as elements. And I love the way you can see little glimpses of things, little different worlds. And sometimes when you have a dream, lots of different little images come in. So that's why we're going to use this collage particularly as our inspiration for making a sky full of dreams where we will have our own little images peeping out. Here's another picture by him which I think is good because it shows a dust, uh, well it's like a snowy window and you can see little tiny bits of butterflies peeping through and I just wanted to give you that impression of little bits peeping through, little tiny fragments of things. Now when you come to do your own source material I'm going to give you a few ideas. So here I've got some old picture books, some children are sleeping, a drawing by Edward Artizoni and here is a picture from an old fairy story book, it says a monkey has a ride. But I've also got this old um, magazine of interiors and what I thought was try and, try and um, get some different sources of imagery together, things where you could just flick through and think okay I'd rather like to have that vase of flowers or what about this little table. Um, you can find all different things and you could say, what about these children sleeping? I might try and do a little drawing of that or this lamp on a dresser. We're going to have lots of random things in our sky of dreams, things that you might not have dreamt up. I mean, you could do your own drawings, but sometimes it's fun to think, what about this funny little house? It might be in my sky full of dreams. I'm going to show you my sky full of dreams now so you know what I'm talking about. So, inspired by Joseph Cornell, I've made a blue sky, and I've done that by simply staining with blue, um, ordinary um, sort of watercolour poster paint over a big sheet of um, um, house wallpaper, but you could just use a nice sheet of paper. And I also wanted to make it look like a starry sky, because this is our sky full of dream images. And I'm opening one now. Can you see that? That's where the images are. But first of all, I'm going to show you how to make a starry sky. Now, I got some old, some old bit of white emulsion because that's nice and thick for dotting on. And I'm dotting on little stars like this. You could look at a book of the constellations if you like the nighttime sky. You could just have fun. And sometimes if you want to make a smaller dot, because some of the stars are smaller, just use a pencil and dot on like that. Can you see? Little dots. It's really fun to make a starry sky. So that's the starry sky. Now I used a craft knife to cut some circles after I'd made my starry sky and let it dry. But I drew around and then with my craft knife I cut a circle around. And you can also do that with scissors. So you could make a little tiny cut like that and then just keep going around. But the thing to do is to always draw the circle first so you start with a nice circle. So when you've got um, some nice circles and I've got quite a few here and I've dotted them around you can think about what to put behind them so you've got your source material things that you're going to be inspired to do little copy pen drawings with and I've got a biro now a biro is a great thing because you can draw very fine with it different types of lines and I'm going to show you now some of my drawings this one this is a little boy clown look and there's one of these stars that I didn't stick down because I made it with a hole punch here's a little boy and in this one, can I just peel it up? Well, it's a moon, a little moon. And on this one, it's a girl on a horse. So I think I, I copied that from an old photograph of a film. Now, I'm gonna show you a technique now, um, and it's quite good. If you use Biro Fine, you can get a nice fine line, and then you can thicken it, you can make it like an ink pen, you can make a nice fine line. But also, here's an old technique called cross hatching, and it makes a nice, different type of background. So I'm going one way. Can you see the way my pen's going? It's going one way and then it goes the other way and it makes a little diamond pattern. This is called cross hatching and it's an old fashioned pen technique. And if you do more cross hatching, you can make it darker. But the thing to do is always make your lines go the same way, one way and then the same way the other way, not mix it up too much. So there, I'm cross hatching in the background so that my little horse stands out. Now if I wanted to, I could even maybe stain with watercolour parts of the picture. So I might make behind her 
slightly pinky purple afterwards, so I might do that. See how she's standing out more. And cross hatching can be quite fun. And you can bet with Biro, you can vary the thickness of your line without getting into all the worry that you sometimes have when you use an ink pen. And also, not everyone has ink pens at home, do they? But if you use an ink pen, sometimes you make a blot when you've done something that you really like. You can also use cross hatching to create a bit of shading. See, I've just done a bit of shading around to make the horse seem a bit more roundy. My line is a little bit curved. I'm going with the shape of the thing. Just a little bit on her knee there as well. That's an old fashioned technique. So here's my sky full of dreams. Now if I'd wanted to, I could have done some colorful images and I'm gonna show you a couple of ways of doing that. Up here, I've, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna show you this one. This is, well, it's just a little painting of some trees that my daughter did. And I thought, well, actually, maybe I'll have one or two colored ones because that might be nice as well. Or you could just use all coloured ones. It's up to you. Here's another technique you could use. You could use abstract colour. So here's some abstract colour. You could slip that underneath. See how that looks. I think that's also quite nice as well. You can have something different in each window. Um, or you can just stick to using these nice fragment pictures that you've collected from lots of places and have some fun getting some old books together or maybe even old photos and finding different tiny little small parts of an image that you can do a small drawing of. So here's a little moon. I think I made this one up actually because I love the moon so much. And then you can close it and you can ask someone to come along and have a look at your sky full of dream imagery. I'm calling it dream imagery because they're all strange little things that keep that have um, come from different places. And I liked imagining that the sky was full of our dreams, little images just flying around. So I hope you can really use your imagination to find lots of different beautiful things and bring them together to make this sky full of dreams.